yeah, as I was going to say, so today I wanted to get into some different ways of promoting your release, talking a little bit about um, what to expect if you're paying for it, and basically what you can do to avoid having to pay all this money yourself, because promotion of a release can be extremely expensive, and from experience, just dealing with lots of different promotion companies, you never really know what, what you're going to get for your money as well, and um, it can be expensive, and I've spent myself... Um, in excess of six hundred pounds to promote releases in the past, and um, nine times out of ten, been a little bit underwhelmed by what came back. You know, when you pay a lot of money. Shout out Recluse, welcome to the stream. So yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about um, promo, some different things you can do um, to save money. I want you guys to have some money in your pocket at the end of this. So. Um, in terms of the track as well, a little update on that. I'm going to set it for distribution um, this week. I'm planning to get it out for the next um, Bandcamp day when they're going to drop their fees. Now, the reason for that is the last two months uh, that Bandcamp did this, I had two extremely successful days from a label perspective on Bandcamp. So I think it would be a massive help to um, get this song out um, and available on Bandcamp Day because a lot of people are going to be uh, trawling through Bandcamp trying to find some music to buy, trying to support artists. So, perfect day to release music is these days that Bandcamp are doing where they drop their percentage, which is 10 to 15 percent, depending on who you are, what you do, um, and what kind of agreement you have with them as well. Um, let me get some music on in the background while we're doing this. Right, let me um I wanna make sure that the music's not too loud as well. Okay, how's that sound? You hear me alright? Good, good, good. So um as I was saying Band Camp Day. Uh, the next one, let me just check. They've been doing this the last couple of months. Um, they're going to do it for the next few months. So uh, they waive fees on the 1st of May. The next one is... Bear with me. Why is it so hard? Let me get my calendar up, that'll be a bit easier. So, it's June the 5th. June the 5th is the next day that Bandcamp are dropping their fees. And then it will be July the 3rd after that. Now, I'm trying to get something else out in July. Big one, which I'll talk a little bit more about on the streams. Music's a bit loud, yeah? Let me bring that right down. Hold on. New mic and all that. Well, not new, just different one. How's that? It's the uh, 5th of June. They send the 3rd of June and the 5th of July, yeah? Let me just check. It's normally on a Friday. Bear with me, sorry. I'm going to make sure I'm giving you guys the uh, correct info. It's the 5th of June and the 3rd of July, I believe. Is the music still really loud? It's it's really low down in the mix. Let me, uh, let me have a listen. I'm going to have a listen of what you guys are hearing just to make sure. I've got the music really quiet. You can hear me there. Let's get this right. I 
Okay, that sounds about right to me, how's that? There we go. Sometimes you've got to monitor yourself in the headphones. Not that I had the headphones on. Anyway, uh, less chit chat. So yeah, it looks to me um, like we're going to be aiming for the track that I produced to come out on the 5th of June. Now, another thing is um, with distributors, you'll want to get that in early. Like um, with most distributors, you'd have wanted to log that. If I wanted that to come out on that date, um, I should have probably pitched it around it's going to be fine um, obviously if you watched last week you know that I'm with Label Engine I know that I'm going to be fine to get it out on that date on all platforms but one thing that I have done in the past which has worked out alright for me and isn't a problem especially in this climate is giving Bandcamp a little exclusive on it the good thing about Bandcamp is you can put it I can upload it now and, and bring it out now right now it's instant it's like uploading something to SoundCloud um, so what I've done in the past with some mixes, uh, releases is released it early on Bandcamp and then let it reach uh, the streaming platforms later. So I'm not too worried if I can't get this track on all platforms at that date. Um, I want to actually tweak uh, the master, which is going back to the mastering. Um, master sound great. Um, got them back last week. But when I played the track in a mix next to some other stuff that sounded similar to it, I realized that certain elements of it were not sounding quite how I wanted them to sound. So I've gone back to my guy, Robin, and I'm going to send him a slightly tweaked uh, pre-master. I'm just going to um, amend some of the sounds in my mix. I want to bring up that kind of uh, floaty square wave sound in the mix a touch. And I want to bring uh, the overall volume of the bass down a touch. Because what he did was great in like bringing all of the sounds together. But when I was mixing, it, it sounded a little bit muddy um, by comparison to a couple of other tracks. So yeah, I'm going to uh, probably get that mar the new master back um, in the next couple of days. But um, it won't sound that different, to be honest. It's just, uh, I just need to balance it slightly. So that's why I haven't sent it to a distributor yet. But my advice would be, make sure that you log your releases at least three weeks before. Do I have to pay again? No, Lukey. Um, another good thing about using a professional is they will amend stuff. That's part of it. Um, you can only afford Lander at the minute. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I was saying, like, Aria Mastering was good. I thought that was pretty good for the money as well. Um, so if you can only afford Lander, that's all good. You know, look after the pennies, definitely. Um so yeah, that's the only reason I haven't. I would say send your, make sure you got your stuff out to your distributor three or four weeks before release minimum, because um, the next three weeks I'm gonna spend promoting my release, um, and that is what we're gonna get into today: how to promote your release, some of the tr tips and tricks, and just beginning as well. Obviously, I've been sending music to DJs for years, so my um, my uh, contact book is quite big so when I'm sending music out I'm sending it out to like three or four hundred people um, so I want to kind of like take baby steps and show you uh, how to begin getting that list of contacts together if you don't have any it is literally as simple as interacting with people DJs are normal human beings most of them yeah there are a few robotic ones out there don't get me wrong I've met a few of them cheers everyone actual pint glass in attendance today um, and um, yeah so I would say at this stage three weeks ahead of release I want to be sending it to DJs in an ideal world if you want to give yourself sort of six to eight weeks obviously right now is a different time um, the COVID situation means a lot of print media isn't even happening so send it back in the day I might want to before all this happened I would have wanted to send it to contacts at like Mix Mag, DJ Mag, that kind of thing, to give it a chance of getting a review in the magazines. Um, bear in mind, magazines have lead times a lot further out than like a blog or something like that, you know. You want to send it to a magazine, you want to send it to them maybe seven, eight weeks ahead of release. So 
long gone are those ideas of uploading something and putting it out the next day. If you're expecting it to get into magazines, they're only going to review it if you get it to them about seven to eight weeks before it comes out. Because if I send it to my guy now who's writing in MixMag and my tune's coming out in three weeks, mix the actual magazine isn't, you know, like his deadline was like a week back for the next month's magazine. So by the time he gets it, it's too late. Um, how do you know when something is worth making a proper release? Any Anything that you're planning on um, releasing. <laughs> if you're making music with the intention of releasing it, you're always thinking about um, release, I think. You just know if you like the sound of the song and, he, and it and you like it, that's it. It's all it boils down to. And for me, if I'm making like a project, like an EP or an album or something like that, it's different. The thought process is different. Like what we worked with up to this point, the track that I made, um, uh, it would be put aside and be like, right, I've got a track that sounds like that. What else kind of needs to happen in in that EP or in that album? What else do I need? So that's kind of like the line of thought, the thought process. So yeah, print media, you need seven to eight weeks. With this particular track, we're looking at three weeks, which for me is very short. I normally like to get my releases lined up about a month ahead of schedule, at least four weeks, right? So first things first, I want to send it to my press and DJs. The way to go about doing that is... We're going to go through real quick. Um, in the background right here, you can see, um, if you didn't join us last week, this is a website called Beat Chain. It's free. It's well worth signing up for. It costs you absolutely nothing. You link up all your social media accounts, Twitter, Facebook, Insta, Bands in Town, TikTok, which I only signed up for the other day, hence one follower. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to use too much time on TikTok, but I will get into it today got an interesting case study to show you depending on the kind of music you make tiktok might be useful for you uh spotify soundcloud deezer youtube you can link as many accounts as you like in there and you can have a look at the analytics um let me have a little look in so twitter i can see my insights here that 58,000 point 58.4 followers 65 new ones i think that's this week um, 9.7k favourites. I'm not even sure. What's a favourite? Is that like a like on my tweets or something? 173 retweets, which is 77 down from my previous. So my, my Twitter game has been a bit weak this week, obviously. Um, and here I can see um, what tweets have been doing well. I think that's overall, right? And tweets where people have engaged with me by the looks of things. Anyway, um, back to insights. So yeah, Facebook's still de in decline. I don't know. I can't explain that one. But I think it might just be people leaving Facebook in general. It's pretty dead. Um, do I ever finish a tune that I know I want to release, but once it's all done, change my mind? 100%. I released... Uh, so on the first Bandcamp day in May, uh, March... I released that album, uh, which was like 10 tracks, and most of those had never been released before, but they were stuff that I produced like 10 years ago, and I was playing a lot of them out as well, so it wasn't that I didn't like them, they just, when I was planning releases, they those tracks maybe didn't fit with some of the other tracks I was trying to release. Any tips for reaching out to magazines, blogs, etc.? Feel their public demo mail is like playing the lottery. Ryan, to be honest with you, it's all a lottery. You can never guarantee anything's going to land in a magazine, a playlist, a blog, any of that. You've just got to play the game. You've got to give your releases the best possible chance. You never know what um, what these DJ, what these magazines, what these DJs have got hold of, what they're doing on the time. Sometimes it is just luck and timing. Um, for me personally, if someone's sending me music, it's a lot about luck and timing because um, I'll normally like... I'll check music maybe um, once or twice a week. Um, some people f expect a, a reply like sh instantly if they send a DJ their music, but that's, you know, I'll, I'll check my SoundCloud inbox before I'm going to do a mix or a stream at the moment. Um, so, yeah, the timing on that, like, say I'm going to do a mix on Saturday. If you send it to me on Friday night, you're going to be top of the, you'll be one of the first ones I'm going to listen to. So, um, 
I mean, that's something to bear in mind, maybe, if you're specifically sending it to a DJ that you know has a radio show the next day or a mix or a gig coming up that weekend. Um, maybe you could be tactical about it and send that DJ your track the day before the day of their gig because that's when they're most likely to quickly scour the internet for a few new bits for their set. Um, so that's that's one. Um, do you think you're better off sending something to like a private SoundCloud link to get people to listen? Yeah. Um, private SoundCloud link is, for me, the best one. And even though I send my music out via Label Engine's uh, DJ mail out thing, which I'll get into, I also follow that up with personal messages to DJs I'm friends with um, and it's always a private SoundCloud uh, playlist with a download because they can listen to it, they can download it straight away and if they need to they can message me on SoundCloud but I message, m most people like, I'll, f I'll go into like a Twitter DM or you know, a lot of people like to, are a little bit more responsive on certain social media sites than others. Some people send me music on Instagram and I only just realised that you can actually open your Insta messages on desktop now. But Instagram's not a great place to send people music. As much as it's a good place to quickly get in touch with someone, if you're sending music to a DJ, um, you know, they need to download the files. Instagram is ultimately something that people are scrolling on their phone on most of the time. So at least send it to somewhere that they're on, they're going to look at it on a desktop. Hence SoundCloud messages, you can't look at those on your phone. Which is another reason why I like people send it to me there, because I'm always going to be on my desktop in my SoundCloud messages. Um, I'm different to other people though. A lot of people don't check their SoundCloud messages. And this is the point I want to make. Every DJ has a different way they like to receive music. In terms of the press, it, it tends to always be uh, email. And the way to go about getting that information is, is simply to ask, how do you check Insta on desktop? Open up the Instagram website on desktop, www.instagram.com and the rest will become very plain and simple and easy. Um, but yeah, I, I, I opened it, opened my messages on there for the first time the other day to download something that Zinc sent me. Shout out Zinc if you're watching. Um, so, how do you get DJs email addresses in the first place? Well, if you don't know them personally, it's as simple as asking. Where where do you get where do, where do you want your music sent? A lot of DJs want music sent, right? They don't necessarily want it in their email inbox. I'm definitely one of them people. My email inbox has to deal with label stuff, other businesses that I'm involved in. I, it's constant, every day. Email, 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 email. If you send me your music in an email, I'm not going to look at it. I'll, I'll look at it when I've got time. And most of the time, if I've got a couple of hours before I need to record a mix, I'm just going to go to SoundCloud and, and Bandcamp, to be honest. Um, by the time I've done that, I ain't got time to start trawling through 10 days worth of emails to find a promo. So SoundCloud inbox is always the best way for me. Other DJs, though, might have an e email specifically for promos. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of how this might work, right? So here's, we're on Twitter. Uh, this is the Terrorism Twitter stream. So I'm not too, I don't, I don't use this one too much in terms of like browsing. But let's, who, in the chat now, name a DJ that you might want to send music to. Let, and we'll see if we can find a way of getting that to them on the stream live. Name a couple of DJs in there. Scream. Scream's a Scream's not a bad example. I know him personally. Let's see if Scream has any uh, way of publicly asking for music. So literally, we'll find him on... The first thing you're going to do, before you even tweet him, is have a little look at his... Uh, at his bio, right? Bookings. Don't don't send uh, people's agents your music either, because it's not going to get to them. Hundred percent, telling you that now. Um, so this is agencies management. Uh, so he doesn't have a link on there uh, that suggests he's looking for music to be sent. Um, it's not going to work if I ask him where where can I send music. But the next step for me would then be uh, literally drop him a tweet. Hey man, uh, you know I've got something that I think you might like to play. 
um, where's the best place to send you music and I mean he might I wonder if we can search Twitter for it um, scream send music search it um, where can we send music to he hasn't replied to that let's see you just literally have a look and see if uh, he's replied to any so look this I'm seeing like there's an email there for B traits straight away B traits um, former BBC DJ very good DJ there you go you've got her email address bang that in a little file you start collecting away email addresses of DJs that you want to um, email I can't see any public replies of Scream giving his email address out so that suggests that he probably hasn't given it out so dro dropping him a tweet doesn't seem to work but yeah so Scream it, we're not gonna get that email pretty simple guess it and do scream at gmail.com I can tell you now that's not his email address but yeah that's basically how you do it right Eclair Fifi one man joker all right let's have a look if one man email Uh, first thing to do, sorry, missing my own advice there. DJ One Man. Um, bookings muz at dj one man dot net. I mean that that looks like a personal. Uh, oh look, there's me at the top of his uh, sh stream there as well, talking about the time that I shared a taxi with him and Pat Sharp. Real stories. Um. I don't realise that I wasn't following Horsepower or Ben UFO or Madam X from Terrorism. Let's give them a follow. Um, one man is quite a responsive guy on a lot of social media. That looks like a personal email. Um, I mean, etiquette would be to ask if it's okay to send music there before just sending it. But it's on a personal... Um, personal website so it might not be a problem um we go back into the chat where's the accent from new zealand finland me where do you think i'm from big up macaroni welcome to uh, the show by the way new zealand no people always say that to me when i get in taxis finland <laughs> are you someone winding me up are you winding me up now, I get this a lot. When I'm in taxis, people think I'm Australian. Serious name, as someone from New Zealand, that's pretty funny. Ghana. I'm definitely not from Ghana. Definitely not from New Zealand. Aussie, I get. I mean, I get that because I said... What did I say? I used to use a, a term. Anyway, I'm, I'm waffling. Um, I'm, I'm from London, yeah. I'm from South London. In Croydon. Born and bred. I've lived here all my life. Um, let me just go back through the chat and get through some of these. So, so yeah, basically, getting DJ's email addresses is, if they're not public on their profiles, just ask them in on Twitter. And if they don't get back to you, move on. They'll, you know, once you build up your profile, if your name is someone that they recognise on their timeline, then they're more likely to reply. But don't feel disheartened if you don't get it. Some DJs are just not active on social media. It's normal. Um... Even for me, people I know, personally, yeah, friends of, I can send them DMs, messages, and I won't hear from them for like a week, two weeks, and then when I do hear from them, it'll be about something completely different. So, yeah, demos, there you go, Eclair Fifi, demos, musicforfifi at gmail.com. So while we've been searching now, we've had... B Traits and Eclair Fifi, two great DJs. You've got their email addresses. Bang them in your uh, in your list, Re and and start building your list of contacts. Um, and that might just be literally like a spreadsheet if you're if you're a deep person. 
Um, but there you go. You've got like inst Insta bios. Basically, they're bios. Um, different for DJs and label owners. You know, a lot, a lot of people have different ones. Ray Dooku. I think Scream's one is scream one at me.com. I'm not sure if that's the one that he... I think that's an old one, to be honest. I don't think he uses that, but I, I'm, I recognise that email. But I don't think he uses that. Scream at Hotmail. I mean, I don't know. I think he's got a specific one for promo, to be honest. But just ask. Treat them as a person. I found interacting with tweet streams gets people more interested in listening to you. This is another massive point that I want to make, right? Um, loads of people always on to be like, oh, my Twitter's dead though. I haven't got followers, blah, blah, blah. But the reason that you don't have followers, it's the same with anything, right? In life in general, to be honest, not just in promoting music. Um, you need to engage. Be in engage with engage with these platforms that you want to be big on, right? You're not going to get big on Spotify if you're not like actively like prom you know putting playlists out there, uh, pushing people towards it. You everything, all of these little activities you do are going to have their different reactions that you want, right? And Twitter's one of them. If you don't interact with people on Twitter, i.e., reply to some of their promotional tweets, retweet stuff, um, tweet random bollocks all day like I do. You're not going to get followers on Twitter because people are not seeing you. If you don't give people who the, the few people that do start following you at the beginning, right? If you don't give them something to retweet to their followers, how is anyone going to know you're on it? I have this argument with so many producers these days that, oh, I don't really want to do the social media thing. It's you can't. You have to do it. You can't come into this world now and be that guy. And and there's always these people that like argue about. But Burial's not on social media. Burial, there was no social media when Burial started popping. There, there was back, there was MySpace. That was it, right? You didn't have to be on MySpace constantly. It weren't like that. Can we get a dad joke? Um, did you hear about the guy who dropped his testicles in glitter? Pretty nuts, man. Anyway, moving swiftly on. That's about that's a banger. I'm not having that. Um, but yeah, your following is dead on Twitter, but if you're not engaging on it, you're just, you're not going to get any followers. It, you get back what you put in in a lot of these social media. Shout out Serious Name on the cheer. I'm, I'm hoping that was for the joke. Um, it was a, that was a splendid joke. Dad joke book coming out. Um, when, when's Father's Day? Maybe that's another promotional stream. Well, we'll dad joke father's day book is coming out we're, we're gonna make that happen I need to look into dates it's probably probably a bit soon now to be honest um but yeah anyway there's that's how you get your djs press is even easier right and a few tips right press you want to find finding the people who write the articles is tough right but a good one to do is think of some artists that you think are similar or if you're in a specific genre or scene which artists who are doing well in that sound, if it, if it is a sound, an established sound, who's getting press and who's writing it? Find those articles, um, find the website, and see if you can find the name of the person who wrote it. Nine times out of ten, a quick Google search or a bit of LinkedIn activity, you'll find that person and find their email address. It's very, very easy. It just takes a little bit of digging around. Um, and... As time goes on and you have your successes and maybe you've done, you've get a few reviews here and there, people start to hear of you, you might end up getting followed by some of these. Follow follow them back. Follow the press. Like put, Make sure that you're keeping in, in touch with them. Engage with their content. Support what they're doing and they're way more likely to support you when you've got something that you're looking for support on. It, it's not rocket science, honestly. It is a... It's a lot simpler than a lot of people realise. Evening Five Sons, what's happening? Welcome. Good to see you. Big up Spirit Bomb. Um, so yeah, it literally is as simple as being engaged. Engage with people that you want to support you back. And don't be surprised when they don't. But also, don't expect it. You cannot expect anything 
And this is another thing that comes with paying for promo, right? None of these promo companies can guarantee you any of the stuff. And I've paid it myself, right? Um, had an album come out on Terror Rhythm on the label, and not my, not one of mine, another artist. And it was the first time I released an album on the label for a while. Um, so I wanted to really like give it a kick and see if some of like maybe paying someone to help like beef up what I already do would be worth it. And they done a pretty good job, but nothing really. It wasn't like you know like a front cover or a massive feature in a in a print print mag or something like that. Which if you're paying like five six seven hundred quid, and that's cheap for promo, honestly. Um, you cannot expect a lot back for it. You you might get a few nice blog posts um, and a couple of reviews in magazines, but you can do that on your own. Honestly, you really can. All you got to do is make the contacts and be a likable person. Be nice. That's simple. Simple as that. They at least give you their ears, and if they like the music, then they might review it, might do a feature on it, might post about it. If they don't like it, they probably just won't because they're not going to write about it to say that they thought it was bland if they think you're a nice person. And that's all it boils down to, people. Be nice, don't be a dick, and you will get places. If the music's good, you'll go far. You'll go very far and you'll be around for years as well. But I've seen a lot of talented people who are dicks and you don't see them six months later. They have six months of heat, you know, when they're not the hottest thing in the world anymore. All those promoters that spent all that money booking them and they were a dick, they, you know, they're not going to book that person again if they're not like a guaranteed ticket seller. They're not going to take a risk on you. Um, so I think that about covers getting contacts for um, DJs and, and press. Um, I'm trying to find like a good example of maybe a press one. Um, let's have a look at Mixmag on Twitter. Obviously, this is a bad time to be looking at um, print mags just because it's not. Uh, they're not in print, right? I don't think. Issues are out today. Get your copy. So I'm assuming. I know that was March. But I know people in the press and I know they've all been furloughed, so I don't think um, that print is going to be a thing for a minute. Um, so here, look, Eglo Records has blazed a trendsetting musical trail. Shout out Alex Nutt, Eglo Records is a great record label. Um, if we click into this article, Eglo Records, let's see if we can find out who wrote this. Joe Roberts, right? In, let's say you want to find... you. If you think that your music is uh, relevant to DJs or musicians that maybe like stuff that Egglo are putting out, then maybe you want to send your music to Joe Roberts at Mixmag. So we're going to go into Twitter. We're going to search Joe Roberts Mixmag and see what comes up. Oh. My keyboard's having a mare tonight. I don't know what's up with it. Joe Roberts V Mix Mag, no? Joe Roberts Mix Mag. People. I mean, there you go. You search Mix Mag and people comes up. Mix Mag Deputy Editor. Uh, BBC Introducing Dance Sundays Broadcast Journalist and DJ. Uh, Repping Mix Mag. Ralph Moore. Uh, editor at Mix Mag. Thomas Fraser. Shout out Thomas. My guy. Uh, Edits Polymer mag Magazine, which is a great online publication he's just started. Let me give them a follow. I should follow him from Terror Terrorism as well. Um, I mean, look at that. I've searched for Joe Roberts Mix Mag and I've hit people. And I've got all of these people on mix from Mix Mag on Twitter. Give them a follow. Hit them up with a tweet. They're much more likely. There you go. Joe Roberts, writer at DJ Mag Mix Mag. We found him. He doesn't have his uh, email address public, but, and this is a sneaky one, but if you really want to have a guess at it, let's, you can look at the format of other people's emails in that uh, um, company. So, 
There's Seb at mixmagmedia.com. So we've got a mixmagmedia.com email address there. Um, where else is there? Patrick at mixmagmedia.com. So let's let's take a guess that his email address is like Joe at mixmagmedia.com. If you want to be sneaky about it, that is a way. You know, once you find out the format that that company's email addresses are in. But there you go. You want to send your music to people at Mixmag, but don't just blanket email people. It's that's definitely not the way forward. Like I did there, right? If 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 Eglo Records is a label that um, is relevant to you as an artist, then Joe is your guy because Joe knows about Eglo and Joe writes about Eglo. So if your music is similar, then at least he might be interested in it. Don't just don't if you if you make bass music, don't send your music to the techno editor necessarily, right? If you make, let's say you make, let's say you make lo-fi hip hop, sending your beats to the Mixmag techno editor is just going to annoy them and you don't want to annoy anyone along the way. If you can avoid annoying people, that is, that's the key ingredient to all of this. How much time should you typically allow between releases? I mean, I'm old school. I like to give each, I, a lot of labels out there will put stuff out every week and you can do that if you want. Um, and the beauty of that is some things will hit and some things won't. Um, I like to give things a decent push to DJs and press just because I'm a bit old school about it. I, it's that old romantic side of promo that, you know, it builds up a little bit of a buzz for a release. If you've only got a week to build up that buzz, it's not long enough, right? Three weeks is really not that long either and um, what, what we're doing for this release back in the days of like dub plates and stuff people were so hungry for that song to come out that they were, had been listening to it for six months before any of it come out dom what's happening mate in regards to promo some tips for trying to get a mix about rather than a track um that's a tough one actually some I think something that I've asked artists to do on my label in down the years is if they have a release, I'll say like, oh, do you have the means to record a mix as well? And if they do, then I can then pick for, as, as a label owner, when I'm pitching their release to channels, blogs, websites, I can also say, oh, you know, I've also got uh, this guest mix they've recorded. If you'd be interested in hosting that with your article, then that's like an extra bonus for them. Do you know what I mean? It's a nice thing. But even if they don't use it, it's a great way to help promote your release. Even if, as an artist, putting it out on SoundCloud, MixCloud, um, it's a nice little throw forward to your release. Um, but it's well worth getting artists to give you a mix if, if they're up for it. You know, then I can go to my guys at MixMag and be like, here's a release. I really, pre really appreciate if you have a listen to it. If you like it, and you're down um we've got an artist uh, like guest mix if, if it's of use to you and obviously with your contacts in the dj world as well you know the likes of people like nana who's really good on represent works at beats as well uh you know people like people like her have guests on the show all the time it's always nice to have a mix like in at the ready do you know what i mean um Reaching other places for mixes, lots of events, companies. Oh yeah, right now as well, definitely. I feel like now is the time. If you've got mixes, Dom, this is the time. Like all these radio stations right now, I'm I'm getting hit up constantly because people know I've got a setup at home. So if you've got the means to do a mix right now, you can hit hit up Nudes Radio, hit up you know like NTS, hit them all up because they're looking for content right now because a lot of their regular broadcasters and their locations are down. So if you've ever wanted to get on the radio, this is your time. That's a good one, actually. If you're a DJ and you've wanted to get in the radio all your life, now's the time. Hit up the radio stations with a mix because they're looking to plug gaps in their um, broadcasting schedule right now. Good one. Thanks for bringing that up, Dom. It's, it's a nice, that, I, wouldn't, I would have forgot about that completely, but it's a good one. Gotta be a winner. Welcome. Hello, gotta be a winner. Welcome to the stream. And welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a lovely Tuesday, wherever you are. Um, 
yeah, it's a great idea for getting a, a, a shout on what the artists are into. Um, and also just like for a release, for an app, like an EP, if it's like a conceptual EP or something, it's really nice as a DJ to like go, you know, this is all the stuff that I'm into and here's my EP. This is like my, this is like my offering to all of these artists that I love. And it then puts, it gives you a bit of context. So if you're a writer and you have a listen to the mix and the EP, it's like, oh, actually I can kind of hear a bit of burial in there and a bit of scream and a bit of this then all of a sudden it makes more sense and it gives them something easy it makes it easier for them to write about you just came out to your family wow gotta be a winner congratulations drink to that well done we're proud of you and welcome i'm, I'm glad that you came here to hang out that's crazy big things done a couple of shows on subtle this month yeah i mean like a lot of those um a lot of those uh, channels are looking for content right now um if you've got a mix and it's good this is the time to hit them up um and always email man is a big thing as well when you're promoting music when you're promoting your ep make it feel personal so if you're sending a mix same as sending music say you're hitting up let's say you're hitting up nts um you find someone at NTS who maybe works in programming, try and get hold of an email address, or just, you know, like, blind blind tweet at them. Um, and basically, you want to open up the email, you need to open them up. They need to feel like you, you're a serious email as well, right? It's got to feel honest. And if it looks like it's being copy and pasted to 20 other radio stations, they're, they're probably not even going to listen to the mix. So the last thing you want to do is try and make an email sound like that. You, there's certain parts of it that you can copy and paste, right, if you want to hit a few of them up. But make at least make the intro feel honest. Try If you've got their name, use their name. Hi, Mark. Um, I'm a big fan of NTS. My favourite shows are this, this and this. Um, I've always wanted to get on the station. I'm not sure if this is the right way to send it, but here's a mix. Um, if you get a chance to listen to it, I'd love to hear some feedback and, you know, and, and that's it. Simple as that. Doesn't need to be a life story. If they want more information, they'll hit you back and ask for it. Keep it short and sweet, but make it feel personal. And that's the same with sending music. Said DJs. Obviously, you want to send it out to as many as possible. But if you can, just make that intro feel honest. That's what I'm saying. I work for Twitch. I'm looking f uh, if the Twitch community are good sports. Good job. Got to be a winner. Twitch is a great place to be and congrats to you for working at such a good company because I feel like the attitude of people that sit on Twitch and interact with my streams is a lot better than say like being on YouTube right Lewis Raven says I've sent a few emails to promote producers I think are similar to a track I recently made but got no replies do I keep sending around to other people or do you accept that the track isn't being that well received um it sometimes can be a mix of that, but also it could be none of that. Like, sometimes I'll go into my SoundCloud inbox and, you know, the SoundCloud inbox bugs out and I'll get stuff from like two years ago at the top of my, at the top of my um, inbox. And it'll be something that I missed from like two years ago and it'll be great. It just was the case that I didn't hear it at the time. So don't, sometimes it's just they haven't heard it. Um, but, you know, move on. Just make sure, just keep sending, like send the next one as well. Um, don't keep sending the same one though. That's one thing. If someone hasn't heard it, bugging them and saying like, "Did you listen to this? Can you give me some feedback?" That's just going to annoy them. And the next time you send something, they're going to be careful about even responding to to you because they'll think that you're going to nag them about for more feedback or more whatever. Right? No one wants to be nagged. Um, DJs, labels, uh, people who work in radio, press. They have a finite amount of time that they want to send, spend on things. Got to be a winner. Thank you for uh, joining us, popping in, and congrats. And hopefully we see you back again soon. Big up. Um, yeah, so don't worry. If someone doesn't get back to you, it might be that they don't like it, but that's all right. If people don't like your music, it doesn't matter. A, a lot of people are not going to like your music. Um, that's life. Do you send reminders? No, never. I think I think um, when I send the DJ mail out, like the automated one from, like the non-personal one, basically, um, 
unless someone has specifically asked me to send that oh can you send me that please send me that I need that I heard you play it on the radio please send it to me and then I go cool we transfer send it to him and then I get that email from we transfer like a few days later it's like no one's downloaded your thing then I might pop in and say mate uh, that thing you sent, you asked me to send, it's going to run out. Here's that link again in case you missed this. Just bringing it back to the top. That's the only time I would send a, like a reminder, if you know what I mean. Feedback needs to be feedback, not a full-blown conversation. Yeah, I mean, I personally as well, I'm not massive on feeding back on people's music. I, I understand why people want it, but I always look at music from a point of view that if you like it enough to send it to me, as an artist, then then you're happy with it. And that's all that really matters. If you want me to talk to you about where it sits in the current market and stuff like that, then I can, but I don't know. Then we're getting away from the musicality of it. Do you know what I mean? We can talk about that on this stream and why your music may not be working in the current climate, but that always is not, sorry, that is not always relevant either because so much of today's market is powered by algorithms and not actual connections with the music. So you mustn't get downhearted at the moment. You mustn't get downhearted. You just got to keep chipping away. Back in the day when I first started out, it was just vinyl, right? So we didn't have all of these feedback loops that we've got now. Um, there was no way of knowing if my music was even being heard or bought by anyone, right? I was playing it on pirate radio to the only people I, I got any feedback from were people that were texting in the studio text uh, line to like say this tune's a banger or something like when's it out. Then it comes out in the shops and I didn't know if anyone was even buying it until the shop calls me and says we need more. And I think I've taken a little bit of that with me throughout the whole process that I mean I'm, I think back from personal point of view right I released an EP in 2017 called Overdue and I worked years on it right it was um, stuff that I'd worked on through all the years like becoming a parent doing all of that like and I had like high hopes for it I really like I main I made sure that I really like hit all of the targets on promo made sure everyone got it all of that kind of stuff right um, sent out got a lot of great feedback from my peers and DJs and producers that that I, I rate and that matters to me right to me that matters more than um, numbers if my friends and producers that I look up to um, are supporting it and telling me that they like it then that is a big win for me but then when it hit the streaming platforms it didn't really do numbers that are comparable to anything that I've done previously like it, it none of it smashed do you know what I mean it none of it like None of it, apps, I don't think any of the songs on that EP have hit like even over 100k on Spotify. But to me, it's still some of, it's still my best work. It's my best EP, right? So I don't care. And I honestly believe that over time, five, ten years from now, those songs will be spoken of the way that people speak of the shit that I've released with Skepta and Japan and all of that, like. You know, we, we laugh about the play Japan thing, right? It is a thing. But I genuinely believe that in five, ten years time, people might look back at that EP and be like, wow, I missed that at the time, but it's aged well. And that's that's how a lot of people talk about my early stuff now. And a lot of that didn't communicate. You know how many, like, people bang on in grime about a track I made called Shallow Grave, right? At the time when I made that song and it was out on vinyl, no one played it. I'm not even joking, right? it wasn't played. A few people played it. That tune was bigger in playgrounds in the Midlands that I had no idea about until the internet started to warm up. And now I'm hearing like all these freestyles over this beat that no one cared about in my circles or in the grime scene back in like the early 2000s. But now that song is like looked at as like a classic by kids that were like spitting bars in a playground. It's mad. It was a B-side, right? But as long as you're happy with your music, that is all that matters. And the only thing you need to do above that is just give it a chance, right? And bothering people to like check it, check it, check it. Don't do it, don't force it. If Because 90% of the time, and I'm being honest, they have checked it. They just don't maybe feel it. 
but that's fine if people don't feel your music that's cool no one can no one's gonna like everything you do even your best friends might not like the music you sent them but they definitely ain't gonna tell you they didn't feel it and and what use is them getting back to you to just tell you that they really liked it if they actually didn't like you're not actually gaining anything out of it so don't worry about people not getting back to you but also don't assume it means they hate it it might just mean they haven't listened to it don't worry about it I used to rinse Char in all my sets. Um, yeah, that was the one. I mean, Char was the other side of Shallow Grave, and that that one definitely was everywhere. I, I, knew, I knew that that was popping at the time. Is there a right or wrong in choosing to release stuff yourself or prioritise releasing on a label? Good question, right? Because I run a label, and I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot here. A lot of labels are not going to really do the work, maybe. Or, you know, like, labels are essentially going to take half of the money right that's how labels operate 50 percent between you and the label is normal don't think you're getting ripped off that's been the case um so what i'll talk specifically about my label right terror rhythm i take 50 percent i don't i don't pay advances some labels might pay you in advance what i do do is i'll pay any of the upfront costs mastering uh, artwork any costs like that or or cover that and i'll make sure it goes to all the distributors blah blah do all of the boring work get it to all my press contacts get it to all my dj contacts push it to people from my personal contacts you know rather than just sending them blanket emails one thing you do get if you release on my label is me as a person going into my dms and messaging people who i'm actually friends with and be like i think you might like this release it's this this and this so uh, is it 50% after costs are covered? So yeah, it's so after costs are recouped. So another thing is if you do get in with a label, just make sure that it's um, made clear what their costs include. From my perspective, um, costs could be everything. It could be music video. It could be promo campaign. It could be artwork, mastering, um, radio plugin. It could be um, all manner of things. But I don't really deal with any of that. I do the work myself. So I, as much as I split 50-50, there's artists on my label that will that will back me on this, that they've earned more money from that 50% of their release on Terrorism than they have done with their own releases. And most of that is just down to them not promoting it the way that I do. I, I put a lot of work in, but I'm also, I'm not, I'm not releasing massive artists. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm releasing a lot of artists first first early releases because i just i do want to get them to that stage where they can be you know independent a lot of them don't want to be though the work that goes behind running a label is kind of long i'm not gonna lie it's a lot of stuff or album epic artwork shout out yeah the artwork for this um was done by a dude out in um where was he from serbia Serbian dude, um, he did that. Also did the artwork for the Om Unit, Chrissy Chris, and Maniac releases. Done a, like, a bunch of the Stinker Bell, a lot of stuff from that era. The Or and Anton F tunes around that time, yeah, heat definitely. Um, so yeah, back to label versus self-releasing. If if you release yourself, you're going to get 100 percent of anything that comes back, right? Um, if you release with a label, you're going to get 50 percent, but you're also going to wait. You have to bear that in mind that labels are going to um, account to you either every six months or every year, depending on who they are. Um, some labels might account more frequently. I think the newer the label, the more likely they are to account more frequently because distribution is set up differently now and that when a lot of labels like my label were set up, we weren't accounted to for, um, we were only accounted to quarterly, so it had to be every six or 12 months because there was no money but now there might be labels out there that do account more frequently if you're releasing yourself you're getting that money every month right bear that in mind oh, it does take 90 days to get money from Spotify and most platforms so so your distributor is going to get the money 90 days later and you're going to get it 30 days after that so it normally take you about three or four months to get the money anyway right so even if you release a record on my label today um, the next accounting uh, would be in like June, July. So I account in July and January. Um, 
you probably have no money in that in that statement anyway. And also, there are thresholds. We bought, we talked about thresholds on distribution uh, last week, and a lot of um, labels will only pay out if you've earned like twenty five quid profit, or whatever. So just let make sure that the if the label is recouping costs, that they're telling you what they're spending the money on. Because a lot of people, you know, this is the problem with a lot of major label deals as well, right? Uh, major label deals will give you like a big advance or whatever, but that's also recoupable as a cost. So a lot of people get the get in their head that like, oh yeah, you know, like get a nice 50 grand advance and buy a car with it, and then the album comes out. It needs to make 50 grand before you even break back even again. Actually, it needs to make 100 grand because the label needs to make their cut back as well. So. Major labels are not the be-all and end-all of it, right? I I do still think that a lot of um, independent labels have a really important role. And I still personally, I said it last week as well, if I, if I had, um, let me say I wanted to release like a techno record, yeah? My record label is not known for releasing that kind of stuff, and neither am I. So I would definitely pitch my first ever techno release to... A bunch of techno labels because losing 50% even, or even losing all of it to be honest with you right the exposure that that would give me to a world of techno buyers and listeners that I wouldn't have got releasing it myself or on my label that is known for releasing experimental bass music and electronica um, would be way better than the than the hundred or the 50% that I'd have earned releasing it myself and that's the God's honest truth Sometimes it's not all about how much money you can earn. It's about um, the long game, right? The long game is really important. A lot of people don't play the long game here, right? And I mean that in that you as an artist are a brand and you need to think about this from the first release to the last. Look at who you're putting yourself next to. Look at, look at the artists that you aspire to be. And look at the kind of publications that talk about them and the kind of club nights and festivals that book them. If you want to be in that, if that's if that if that's what you aspire to be, look at the look at the publications they, they talk to, look at the ones they don't, right? Um, and talking I'm gonna talk candidly from experience here, right? That when um, I had the opportunity to play a lot of those kind of like big EDM festivals in America which was great money, short term, amazing, but it meant that, you know, all of those like cool boiler room, RA write-up type things, they're not looking at you. When you start doing those EDM festivals in America, all those cool publications that you've been trying for years to get onto, then they're not even looking at you anymore. And if you even want them to listen to your music, they have the preconception that you're an EDM artist or something like that right as soon as you start as soon as you hit those EDM circuits the cool blogs don't want to talk about you anymore because you're done to them right the, the key to like nailing it in the electronic music world is being cool enough to get written about and play boiler room but accessible enough that people that listen to say like EDM would also know about you all the EDM blogs festivals they look at the boiler rooms and the RAs and that they're like six to twelve months behind all of that so if you start getting on those cool things earns a bit less money but you're you're the kind of artist that other artists want to be right and if you ever need any confirmation of the fact that I'm spitting right now um Look on Twitter, like keep an eye on like I follow a lot of EDM DJs on Twitter, and if you ask an EDM DJ on Twitter to put forward their like your ideal lineup for a festival, they'll just list the most obscure cool artists because that is who they want to be. That's they just want to be cool. Problem is, you can't be cool when you're being when you're exploding on a stage in front of five hundred thousand people. Like it's great short term and great for money but it's tough man i'm not gonna lie try it's hard it, you once you've gone beyond the call you can't go back so be careful right not this it's not selling out necessarily but it is if you aspire to be like an apex twin or a burial 
but you're performing on the stage next to a marshmallow, don't be surprised when Resident Advisor don't put you in their top 100 year-end list because you won't be in it. No matter how cool or weird your music is, if it's not cool to, to the kind of people that are perceived to be cool, you're not cool anymore. And that is the hardest line to walk in your journey. Knowing yourself and understanding the consequences of placing yourself on certain blogs, certain YouTube channels, certain publications. Because if you want to get in the fact mags, the resident advisors, the you know, you want to play at the deck mantles of this world, you you're not gonna get there hitting main stage electric daisy carnival but you will probably earn a shitload of money so you you have to balance it you will earn a shitload of money but six to twelve months from then and you're not on the next edc lineup you're not on any lineups because you've priced yourself out of the mid-tier lineups you're not cool enough for anything left field it's tough and you you will you'll struggle to recover and i felt it myself honestly like 2012 2010 to 2013 in my career I was earning great money I was playing a lot of big festivals in America not the massive stages though right so I know people that were playing the big big stages and they they don't get club bookings in Europe they don't play in Europe they they literally just play big festivals in America and tour America and nothing else like they play to that EDM circuit they aspire to be a lot of the artists you know that don't do that they want they they would kill to get like a, f a five out of five on resident advisor but they went that far in like the edm circuit and i felt it like not quite as hard as some people i know but it was hard for me to come back from that and like be thought of as someone who has their ear to the ground or is like playing some cool music because they weren't even checking for me they had just assumed that like I was playing tear out dubstep because I was playing in lineups with the the people that you know like people that people would consider like bro step or whatever. They see you on those lineups, they just assume they're not going to like your music, and that that happened to me. I felt that. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's different circuits. You got to ride it. You got to be aware that it's not always about the best, the most exposure you can get. It's the right kind of exposure, right? You just got to get get in the right lane. Like, if you want to succeed, look at the lanes that people operate in and try and operate in those lanes as well, right? You want to be a... If you, if you aspire to be a certain kind of artist, look at the artist that you aspire to be. Look at what they don't do more than what they actually do. That is the key. What are these people not doing? Because if you make a mistake in this game, it can it can burn you. You can get burnt. Let's get, get, the, uh, get the emoji out for that one. You really have to be careful and you have to pick your fights. Your brand is everything. Aligning yourself with uncool brands will make you uncool very quickly. Um, especially as you're starting out because you will always be perceived. You know how many people still think I'm a, just a dubstep DJ? No one knows. Half the people that listen to my music on Spotify, they have no idea what Wave is or what any... Or maybe still think that I'm on Rinse. Or like, like They don't follow you religiously. A lot of people won't so your first impressions will last if you make a wave not make a wave bad bad term to use if you make a dent in the scene that dent will be remembered ahead of anything you do past it i mean like the perfect example of this is bauer right bauer kind of one of the like initial trap producers had that massive hit um that went viral was absolutely enormous he hates that song now and how many people in here can tell can name like the last ep bauer put out he's a very talented musician he, he has his he has an ear for sound but he will always be that guy do you know what i mean he'll always be the harlem shake guy and that's that's the gift and the curse yeah you have an amazing hit which at the time is amazing but artists like Bauer just um, I've read interviews with him and he he hates that song he hates that his life 
is literally like judged by that song now. I know I'm very left field and I accept not many people will get it, but I think a couple of releases before I feel successful, but I know I'm being myself. Exactly. Like a good example now, like we're listening to Clacy Jones on the stream, right? Clacy Jones um, is his music is not the kind of music that that gets played in clubs, right? But it also doesn't land in any of those lo-fi playlists. But he has tens of thousands of monthly listeners on Spotify because his music is very unique and the people that like his music love it. They listen to it constantly all day long because there isn't anything else like it. So if you can find that little space, you'll be good. And there is a living to be made. You have 50,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. You're on, you're on a good track, right? You can use that to open doors elsewhere. And I'd still definitely recommend, though, pushing all your fans to Bandcamp and allowing people to find you on Spotify. If you can get your fans, the thing with Clacy is like he's got like all these fans listening to him monthly on Spotify, but he still sells really well on Bandcamp. And that is how to make decent money as an emerging act. Out of everything I listen to, Clacy is the one that pretty much everyone I play to it to likes. Which song's that? Serious name. Oh right, everyone likes Clacy. I mean, the thing about Clacy is like there's bass in there, there's cinematic vibes in there, it's chill. It's just like a nice, easy listen. It's interesting to listen to, you know? Have I had a chat about putting on my own nights? Alright, so that is another part of like promo. Some people like to like do a release party. Release parties are great. Obviously, this is not the time to be discussing that. We don't know how long it's going to be before clubbing's back to normal. But if and when we do get back to normal, um, release parties are great. Good, a good. There's no, there's no scene without community, right? And that's another thing that I love about Twitch and being on these streams is what we're doing here now around this track that I made, right? The track that I made isn't like a groundbreaking like we're not we're not we're not like breaking the wheel we're not inventing the wheel here right but there's an actual community of people that have invested some time in this song now right and i honestly believe that all this that i'm doing now is also important for the promotion of that song when it comes out because i feel like anyone who's watched any of these streams is going to be interested and intrigued to see if it does well right and that's the community the scene is like almost rooting for it to do well and I guarantee that, I don't guarantee it, but I do think that theoretically that should mean that when it does come out, the streaming numbers should be a little bit better than they might have been. Let's see. This is a perfect way to test that. Um, nothing's guaranteed though, but getting into that, one of the, I've been talking so much, sorry guys. Um, another site here. So a good example, I'm giving up my stats here, but I don't care. It's fine. You guys can see the stats. It's cool. Spotify for artists is another uh, site you need to sign up for. Um, and this is whether you're independent or releasing on a label, because I have a label, but I still have to ask the artists that I release to make sure they do this ahead of their release, right? When you've got a song coming out in your music, up here, so you've got songs, releases, playlists, and upcoming, right? When you've got a song upcoming, which I'll, next week I'll come, I'll open this and show you because it will be upcoming then, right? When I've logged it with distributors, when I've got that tweak done to the master. I've got nothing in there now, right? But as soon as you've logged it with your distributor and they've got it locked in, it will show up here and then you can actually apply for Spotify's playlists. Now, I do this for all of my releases. It doesn't, it's only ever worked for me once, but like anything that I'm teaching you now, nothing's guaranteed, everything's a gamble, but it's free. You gotta do it, why not? It takes you five minutes, and this song here, E Night Revisited, went into uh, the Spotify playlists. I mean, look at that. It that That's Spotify's algorithms kicking in, right? On a Sunday, 386, up to 1.4K. Um, I wish I had the actual release date. The day it came out, you know, look, 
stats, but it went into an editorial playlist. You can see there, the editorial playlist it went into is is a uh, 23% of all spins, but 35% is listeners own, and listeners and fans and community is the key to everything right now. Honestly, engage people with what you're doing, and you'll see. I guarantee you'll see success. Make people feel like they're a part of your process. We could definitely do a release party. Maybe we do that. That's a great idea. All right. We're going to do it, right? That Friday, Bandcamp Day, we'll do a release party for the song. Beat Chain blew my mind last week. It is a good one, right? Beat Chain's a great free, uh, free tool. Um, I think it's important for all us artists trying this together. It is a weird time. A lot of this as well is like... A lot of these things, June 5 release party, yes, definitely. Put it in the diary. We'll have an actual party. We might even get a Zoom chat. I've been figuring out how to get um, live callers into my streams and that should be ready. That is the next level for me. What I want to do is recreate that pirate radio vibe to what I'm doing here. So I want to be able to DJ, throw competitions, do quizzes, invite people in to have a chat, spit some bars over the set, whatever. I want it all going off. And that is, that's the next step for the streams. All right, so that's Spotify for artists. That's another site you need to sign up to. It's free. You just need a Spotify account. Um, and yeah, you can look at your stats um, in real time as well. 17 people are now listening to me right now. My music. Not a lot. I think the most I've ever seen personally was just over 100. But it's very rare I look at that and it's like less. 16 people is kind of like quite low if I'm being honest. That's quite a low amount of people. 15 now. But um, it's all good. It's all good. We can, we can, we can bump that up right now. Watch. Let's, walk, let's listen to uh, a bit of Plastician and see if, see if it registers. Um, what are we going to play? Not going to play Japan. Um, the music. Let's see if Spotify registers it. It's going down. Maybe, maybe it has to... So, to register a play on Spotify, someone has to listen to it for 30 seconds or more as well. So, it's another thing you've got to bear in mind. So, don't make, don't make songs that are under 30 seconds long if you want to get paid by Spotify. 10 people it's going down what's going on anyway that's spotify for artists and um, we've gone into beat chain um i mentioned burstimo before right burstimo is a promo company uh, they charge for promo but I, I wanted to pick this up because it was a interesting um insight to what they do um they helped an artist have a christmas viral hit um, via TikTok and I haven't really had any experience with TikTok I signed up to it this week to have a little look at it and it's quite interesting because they get into things like influencer marketing here and if you're a singer or if you've got vocals I feel like TikTok might might be of use to you I'm not sure how many people are watching this now or in the future are singers but you definitely have to think about TikTok if you're a singer and you have lyrics in your songs or you know there are definitely people out there creating music specifically for TikTok now all these dance crazes and stuff that is down to TikTok right but this company Burstamo who I rate by the way I do like Burstamo I've met these guys um, I was listening to their podcasts on Spotify um, I was looking on Spotify to see what podcasts were out there for like music industries um, and listen to a lot and a lot of it's waffle but they they have one and it was good and I agreed with a lot of what they were saying they weren't chatting shit and the thing that really struck me about them is they are a company that do charge to run promo campaigns for you but they give away a lot of their knowledge on their podcast and one of the things that they that I took away from their podcast was what they said was yeah we charge you know like you know you should expect to pay a grand or more for promo but if you do all of this stuff, you can, you can, this is what you have to do. This is what you're paying us to do. Now, we're charging you for our time and our knowledge, but here's the knowledge. You've got time. Save yourself a grand. And that's what I'm trying to do here as well. Um, but yeah, they basically help this artist go viral 
They've got a million Spotify streams, 900,000 views on YouTube at the time of this blog going, 140,000 TikTok videos made. And they did that by getting their music to a few um, TikTok influencers, right? So TikTok accounts with big followings. So it looks like this one, Crushing It, obviously like a snowman. It was a Christmas song. Lily Dickinson, R-X-N-E-E-X-X, Rainex, I don't know. But all these people posted videos with this music in it, and of course, uh, loads of people used the sound and did their own TikToks. So if you're a singer or you make music uh, with lyrics in it, consider TikTok. I'm not going to rule it out. I don't think any of the music that I release or or produce is going to work necessarily, unless we can start a uh, shallow grave dance craze. Um, I work at school with 10 year olds, TikTok drives me crazy, yeah, I mean, kids are on TikTok, man. I looked into it and it is a little bit confusing for me to navigate it, but kids love it. It's all the dancing and stuff. The intensive snare on TikTok. Do you know what, like, the the, the actual migraine skank came from from me back in the day. JME wrote about the migraine skank on his blog and the migraine skank the term, not the actual dance. The term migraine skank came from Temper T. The way he used to spit. Um, when he when he was spitting, he moved and his head used to go like that. When he was spitting and it looked like he had a headache. And that's, we called it the migraine skank. And then uh, Gracious K turned that term into an actual dance. But there you have it. Bit of, bit of trivia, that's where it came from. I expect you to make a TikTok dance for my EP Modsends. Modsends has a, a release on Terrorism coming on the 29th. It's all logged. It's uh, it's definitely coming out. It's all logged. We are in the promo stage of that now. So yeah, and to talk about his EP, I've already sent it to DJ's press. Obviously, press is a different uh, situation right now. So I'm not. I'm. I don't have massive expectations on the press end, just because I don't even know who's working apart from a, a, a few blogs at the moment. But um, but yeah, I think uh, the DJ, the response from DJ has been good. Been collecting. Also, another good thing to do while you're promoting is uh, collecting like snippets and clips of any DJs in their live streams playing your music. That's a big one at the moment. Um, radio snippets, little radio rips are re really nice to show people that like respected DJs are like into the song. Uh, Mod sends release we're talking about. I played on a. Instagram live video and uh, Virgil Abloh was locked in and dropped dropped some fire emojis um, on the mod sense track so that's going to be really useful um, when we get close to the release probably the week of I'll start filtering some of those videos into my stories um, as can mod sense all of that so things like that are really useful little clips of songs out of radio shows but especially useful on video content so if any DJs are playing your music in their live streams uh, get some screen records of that. They're really useful on your Instagram. Instagram's great for pushing people to your music. Um, now, some of your distributors, you have those pre-save links as well. And I'm not experienced in using them, but I've heard that they're pretty good. Um, if your distributor gets pre-save links for you, um, you can send people to those straight out of any viral video content on Instagram. Jeref, I feel like Bad Like Us is better suited for TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Bad Like Us probably would have been great for TikTok. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try that. So in terms of um, places that you can reach these influencers as well, another one that I want to touch on is Fiverr, right? Because I look on Fiverr and there are people on Fiverr that will charge you to literally like post a viral video on their TikTok or something. Um, digital marketing, influencer marketing. Let's have a look. I will search for the right Instagram influencers to grow your account. Um, I will. I thought that was DJ Cable for a minute. Doesn't that look like Cable? Shout out DJ Cable. We we found your doppelganger on Fiverr, mate. Um, talk TikTok video promotion. I will do you a shout out promotion to my 172k TikTok followers. I mean, that sounds pretty decent, right? 
Um, it says you can get 17 quid. I'll promote your TikTok account by duetting your video directly through my personal account. I mean, I don't even know what a duet is on TikTok, but I'm assuming that means he's going to like lip sync over it or something. I will duet everyone that follows him and likes his video. So, I mean, I don't know what a duet is on TikTok, but 172,000 people seeing your song on TikTok doesn't sound bad for 17 quid. I don't think that's an awful um, amount of money to spend on on like a punt it might it might come off but if it doesn't you've lost 17 quid it's not the end of the world you haven't spent hundreds on it um i will provide instagram fitness shout out what does that mean what's a shout out insta post and story with swipe up link okay i mean that's expensive and 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 then honestly I've worked with companies that that do Instagram influencer marketing, and um, the click-through rate is actually not great on all of it. So if you if you're paying like 17 quid for it, great. If you're paying hundreds, shite. Don't bother. It's much better getting like legit, real, real, uh, real people into your shit. That's for sure. Ryan Gallus, I think Fiverr is hit and miss. It really is, honestly. One thing that I've noticed on it recently, though, and I would recommend... I was looking into it last week because I was looking for, like, decent um, graphic design album artwork. Um, so, look, um, I will draw your album artwork, and you think, ah, oh, it looks pretty cool. This is what I look for, right, on Fiverr. Ordered on Fiverr. That means you can see something that someone's actually paid for on Fiverr. Because one thing a lot of people on Fiverr do is they will do like, they'll just use other people's art in like their sort of previews. It's like, this is the kind of thing I could do for you. But it's not their actual work. Now that is this person's actual work. And you think, well, if you like the look of that, um, it's going to cost you £86. Um, for album art, um, I think... That's not a bad... I can't listen to Japan, I'm sorry guys. It's my own song, but I'm sick of it. Um, I'm not sick of it, I just... I, a bit weird talking over that song. Um, yeah, I mean, if you look at that... Yeah, I mean, if you want me to play Japan on my uh, on my on my Twitch stream, I, I, that's about how much it's going to cost you. Eighty-six quid in donations, and and we'll I'll sit through it on loop. Um, but yeah, I think it is very hit and miss, Fiverr. But I will be honest with you: this terrorism logo you see up in the top corner, up above, right? That little T logo in the top right-hand corner. I paid for that on Fiverr. That was done on Fiverr. I sent them a, a flat version of the logo and they sent me that, a 3D spinning version on a little green screen. Cost me four quid. And it is really good for things like graphics. That was four pounds, money well spent. So Fiverr can be good. That little basic thing there, four quid, turned around in less than a day. And I've got it in black as well. So I've got two versions um, that I can use. Full HD. That's all right for four quid, isn't it? Because I, I can't do that myself. Chris, yeah, you should, man. There's definitely stuff you could do on Fiverr. Um, that was a quick turnaround. That was like a day. But there are jobs on Fiverr that take time. I mean, I've had... I'm trying to think what else I've bought on Fiverr. I've tested out, like, promo things on Fiverr. Not worth it. I've never had a good... Um, experience with any kind of like uh we'll push your youtube channel to like eight million people it's like you don't you get you get a few f like fake um you'll get a few dodgy comments on it and that'll be about it it's not worth the money not that i spent i spent like three quid i was testing it out this is when fiverr was just fiverr um web and mobile design i mean there's loads of really good like twitch uh streaming design twitch store here we go what's this so look, Fiverr's Twitch store. You can get like full-on Twitch overlays, all of the buttons. I that's what I bought on Twitch. Okay, so my sub 
if you are a subscriber, you see the little Terror Rhythm logos next to your name on the chat. That was done on um, Fiverr. Paid 15 quid for a set of them. Bio writing. I wouldn't get someone to write my bio on Fiverr or a press release. It's more than a Fiverr, but I didn't have the time to sit there and make uh, like decent looking Twitter um, emotes. The the ones in the chat, like those emotes, I made those. The Play Japan, Splendid, Terror Rhythm, Gunfinger, the little stish head and the burnt. Like I, all the ones I've just put in the chat, I made those. But the little um, subscriber badges, like I can see Danny Basic, Space Monk, Serious Name. I've all got that little T logo next to their name in the chat. That means that they are a subscriber for a month or two months. And though the, that little T logo was designed by someone on Fiverr. I did my own overlays. Yes, I did. I, pay, I didn't pay for those. I made them myself. Um, so yeah, Fiverr, not bad. There's bits on Fiverr if you need artwork done or a little quick bit of graphic design. There's definitely some bits on there of use. Now, what else did I want to get into today? Okay, another thing for sending music. I didn't get into. Great for um, sending music to DJs. This website, and they've just launched their app as well. You can get an iOS app. It's called Send Music. I've used it myself. It's still like figuring out a few of its bugs, but it's getting there. It's a really good service for sending music to DJs. So if you look on their directory, you can see all these DJs. These are all people that have inboxes on Send Music. And it's completely free to send them some music. So, um, all these people you see here, right? If I if I hover over that, I can see in the URL at the bottom that that is sendmusic.com forward slash rad. And this one's forward slash Hessel Audio. All these people are people you can send your music to straight into this Send Music website. Game changer. There's labels on there, there's DJs, all sorts, right? So to send someone some music, and you can send it to me, send.mu forward slash plastician. Um, and everyone's is the same, right? Send.mu forward slash Benji B. Let's go to his. Send music to me. Literally as easy as that. Look at that. Don't even need his email address. He's on BBC Radio 1. And you just get signed up. Um, send music to me. I'm not going to do it because I sent. I actually sent Benji uh, this track. Um, are we back? Everyone back. How are we doing? Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I reckon what might have happened there was probably where I was uploading that file. It might have just been a bit much. But yeah, that's Send Music. And I rate Send Music. So uh, yeah, chip away through there. Go through their directory. Find the DJs that you want to send. And I said I wouldn't play Japan. The internet died. Yeah, I think maybe Twitch banned me for not playing Japan. But, um, yeah, that's Send Music. Great way to send music to DJs um, without getting their email addresses. And they get yours. I think um, when someone sends me a promo on there, I can't message them back on it. But I can see their email address and stuff like that. Yeah, not too sure what happened there. It was very strange. I, I had a pretty much, like, frame drop free stream up until that point. Shout out Madam X. Out to everyone uh, locked in. Is everyone back? I don't know if it booted everyone off there. Let's have a look. Let's make sure I mute it. Looks alright to me. Look at that, you can see me inside now. Ah, oh, this is great. The tunnel. Let's keep it going. Look at that. That's amazing. Keep it 
game. Right, I'm quite obsessed with this now. How long is this going to go on for? Pretty sick. Am I uh, subscribed to any online DJ pools? Uh, no. A very quick and easy answer to that. No, I'm not. That was a great Vortex. I enjoyed that. That would have been a good EP cover, Jeriff, and that would have saved me some money. Um, yeah, I still need to get the artwork done. Um, I'll probably do it myself, to be honest, uh, for a quick turnaround. Um, but this is another website I wanted to show you guys. Another free one. Another little, uh, another little stish spesh for all my tightwad gang. Free promo. Uh, you can pitch your music to Spotify playlists. These are user-generated ones, not um, not Spotify uh, editorial. So there's loads and loads of people on here who have playlists, and you can pitch to them for free. It's called submithub.com. You sign up. So this is my account. Um, you can see that I pitched Windwalker to a few people. So I'm going to show you now. Um, it says I've got one credit. So what it is, you get premium credits, which you have to pay for. Um, they're cheap, though. Then if you want to pay for it, it might be worth giving it a go. Standard credits are free, and you get one, two of these every four hours. Um, I've, I've also been on the other end of the... Um, on the receiving end of this as well, I'm signed up with my playlists for people to submit. I'm not using it occasion at, at this occasion just because it sucks up quite a lot of my time and don't have a lot of time at the minute. I'd rather put my time into things like Twitch. Um, but submit a song. Um, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'll submit it properly in the week. But um, let's submit a song. Which song would you like to use? I'm gonna use Windwalker, old one, but. Just to show you how it works. What type of credit would you like to use? I have one premium credit left. Premium means you get a guaranteed response within 48 hours. Submission filters to the top. They must listen for at least 20 seconds. And you'll get at least 10 words of feedback if you want it, basically. Standard. It's free. You can use two credits every four hours. No guarantee of response or feedback. Anyway, I'm going to use that premium one that I've had. I must have like accrued that from listening to people's music or something. Who would I like to send to? Blogs, Spotify playlists, YouTubers, SoundClouders, radio, or record labels. I'm going to send it to YouTube, uh, Spotify playlists, etc. Next. How important is the quality of written feedback? So if you if you do want feedback, shout out the Snake Gang, Metal Gear Alarm. That one that one actually effed the stream last time, didn't it? So we know we're all right again. Big up jeans, thank you. Little 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 sip for you, jeans. Smith, you're gonna you're gonna bang some artwork. It's called process. If you want to work on a couple of sketches, get the community involved in that. Um, so yeah. Um, for me, written f feedback, not that important. I'm not that bothered. I don't want feedback. Make them listen to at least ninety seconds instead. That's better for me because this track in particular has about 16 seconds of almost like dead air before it even gets into it. So 90 seconds will give me a bit of a better chance of them maybe listening and hearing the song. Permissions copyright. If someone approves this song and wants to upload an MP3 to their channel, for example as a YouTube video, can you give them permission? So basically if a label owns your music, you can't really give them permission to upload it. The label can though. But if you own your music, if you're self-releasing it, you can do what you want with it. So, um, yes, I can give them permission, but I should be able to keep anything they own from the upload. If you are um, pitching music that is owned by another label, this one will, will sort that. Because it just means that the label will, um, you know, uh, claim any like YouTube content matching. So I have this clicked as default because Terrorism is set up with content matching. Anything that comes out and the label is going to get matched on YouTube, etc. And they can't monetize it, but I can collect the royalties. So, next. Now, you can see all of the different uh, blogs. And you can see like how well they match genres. So you go to like, genres, and I've got grime. Now, I don't want grime for this one. 
Uh, Windwalker is a kind of like chilled out. Um, let's see what we got here. Instrumental. No sign, no singing, but samples okay. When using this, choose a second genre as well, e.g., e hip hop and instrumental or indie rock and instrumental. So maybe I'll. I want like lo lo fi hip hop is probably going to be the best fit. So lo fi hip hop and instrumental. Now, Instagram influencer. So you see this here, the two there. Um, I think is two credits, right? There. So I need to find one with one. I've got one paid credit. I need to find a single. Um, let me see if I can hide. Okay, price, credits, one. Let's just like filter it down, keep it simple. Spotify playlister. 15% approved. That means she approves quite a lot um, for this genre. Response rate 100%. That's good. One out of five influence. Typically shares a Spotify. Has approved 498 instrumental or lo-fi hip-hop songs. Most shared playlists. Piano relaxation. Soft piano music. Lo-fi vibes. Music to study. I mean, I feel like that wouldn't be a bad fit. Lo-fi monk. Chilled beats. Um, 80 average plays as well. Let's have a look. I mean, that's pretty good. 80 plays out of a playlist. Pretty decent. So I'm going to submit to Evanova. Last online two hours ago. I should hear before our next stream whether or not uh, Evanova decided to put me in their playlist. So, submit. Confirm submission details. There we go. Done. Simple as that. There we go. Big up Smith on the cheer. Little Lo-Fi Monk is your cousin. Is that true? The, the space cousins. Should you only ever promote new releases? No. But I do think that you have a better chance of getting into a playlist with something new. If they think they're, if they think they're new on it, they're like more likely to promote it. But um, yeah, I mean, Windwalker came out three years ago. I've just promoted that to someone. I've got two free credits up there as well. Um, but I'll leave them for now. You guys get the idea. It's exactly the same process with free credits. Just um, you're less likely to be seen that maybe. by. So there you go. Another little uh, nugget there. Submit Hub. Let me know if you have any success with it. Um, I've had mixed uh, success. I've had a couple of things going playlists. So there you go. A little bit of free playlist consideration. User generated playlist. Like I said, we talked about Clacy Jones earlier, an artist who has over sixty thousand. Oh, is it over fifty thousand monthly listeners on Spotify? Something like that. And most of them come from user generated playlists. None in none of the Spotify playlists. So yeah, there you go. So this website, um, tell them, is uh, you can pitch to user-generated Spotify playlists for free. You can pay for it as well, which um, I just used a paid credit. Shout out Jenny Cheng. Shout out Smith gifting tier, gifting subs. That's what we like to see. Smith, I've, I've I haven't actually brought a beer in. Let me go and get a beer because I can't I can't have people gifting subs out here, and I haven't got any beer to drink. That's not fair. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit that B right back, and I'm going to grab a beer. Everyone grab a beer. That was nice. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hold on. I'm going to grab a beer, and I'll be back.
I'm back and I got a beer. Thank you, Smith. Big up, Jenny. Cheers. So, yeah, so we had Submit Hub. Nice way to uh, get some free promo again. Save yourself some money. That Beat Chain, another great one for uh, scheduling all those tweets and all the boring stuff that you've got to do. Promote those releases. Make sure you've constantly got a nice um, stream of stuff coming. So when, um, as soon as I've got that release uh, lined up on Bandcamp and all my distribution, I will go in here and I'll start putting things so like it's going to come out on the 5th of June. So I can add one now, the 5th of June. Um, new one out today. Um, go cop via at Bandcamp. Another oh. taking zero percent commission, and I know what my band camp URL is. Terrorism.co.uk goes straight to um, Bandcamp. And I can put an uh, image, my favourite one, classic. And I'm going to schedule that for 11.15 in the morning. Um, no specific reason for that time. Oh, oh, there'll be a lot more on that day. So, there you go. Friday the 5th of June, when our track comes out, at 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to tweet, a promo tweet about it, and I don't even have to think about it. And that is another little free nugget. Beatchain.com costs nothing. Send music to sending music to DJs costs nothing. Um, First Demo, go listen to their podcasts. They charge thousands of pounds for these kind of promo campaigns. They give you a lot of gems on their podcasts. Cost nothing. Um, searching for people on in all these magazines that you read, all of those um, journalists that you that you want to get your music to, find them on Twitter. Find the ones that are writing about music that's relevant to you, and email them cost nothing so these are all things that you can do that that only thing they cost is time and it is it is time consuming and it's not for everyone but this is the absolute crux of why i'm allowed to do this full time honestly i've been doing i've been working in the music industry for nearly 20 years now and it's never been enough apart from when i was like absolutely creaming it as a dj in like the early teenies like 2010 to 2013 I could live just off the DJ gigs but apart from th those f maybe four or five years there I've always done so many different things around all the other stuff that I was doing and that's what it's all about making as much little bits of money as you can um, but being really efficient with your time and all these little things you can do here you know, if you land in a decent Spotify playlist that costs you nothing to submit to, you don't have to worry about promoting stuff on Twitter all day because it's already done. You do it at the beginning of the week. Um, you've sent your music to all these radio DJs. Didn't cost you nothing. Just cost you a couple of hours to write a couple of nice messages to some of the DJs you like. And bang, you're in there. Like swimwear Fiverr. Get yourself some, some graphics designed. It's all a hustle. And then you can focus on making music. I mean, yeah, that is the one thing. It is a lot of hustle. I definitely got a lot less time making music now than um, I did when I lived at home with my parents. If you are watching this, Smith, big up, man. 
I've just seen you've subscribed as well. Welcome to uh, the club, Smith. Um, so yeah, I have a little bit less time to focus on making music, but I run the label and all that stuff as well. We haven't really got into that, but the running of labels and that is an extra layer on top of all of this. But I genuinely believe that take the label out of the equation, if I was just a musician, just an artist, and I was doing all these things that I've shown you, it's manageable. That backfired a little bit on a different way, and we haven't been raiding like that since. But something's come good of the Roots Records raid, and uh, Roots, if you're down, if you're streaming, I'll send everyone into, uh, into your channel for a little raid. Come find me on the Stish Discord if you want to play some video games. Yeah, I I, I think I want to I want to do some, once once we get past this, I think uh, streaming some games would be fun. But um, I've got old school games. I don't know if anyone's down for like real old school games. I've got like all the emulated games on my computer. Chocolatiste, first time I checked your stream. Very informative. Thanks a bunch. Glad to have you here, Chocolatiste. Always, always a pleasure to have new viewers to the stream. Uh, make sure you follow. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, hit that sub. Let me just get that link in there. Um, you can find me on Spotify. So I'm going to link you to my songs. The songs is just where you can find all the playlists. Today I've been playing from the Sounds of Terrorism playlist. Uh, so yeah, serious name, you'll find it in the Sounds of Terrorism playlist. How long should we promote a release once it's been released before we start to promote it new? I reckon, like, I personally, like, I've always said to artists, like, you should have a minimum of, like, six to eight weeks between your releases. Like, even if it's just singles, like, I, I like to, re I'm still promoting the release I put out on March the 20th. Like that's still I still tweet about that every day, and it only just came out on Spotify. It came it was a Bandcamp exclusive for a while. Um, so yeah, uh, big up uh, Shaved Pope. I'm glad. I'm, this is great thing about Twitch is that people are stumbling um, uh, across the streams, and I hope it is of use to people. I know there's a lot of musicians out there trying to earn a little bit extra money from their music, or maybe even move into music as a full-time or part-time um, revenue stream for for them and it, it is doable but it is work i'm not gonna lie i've been doing this for 20 years um, and it's, it, it's hard work but it doesn't have to be expensive work you just gotta put the time in definitely and also just engage with the people that do support you make the people that support you feel like they matter because honestly right now more than ever you, your community is everything. All you guys watching me now, massive, massive thanks for locking in. Uh, Hash Browns, thank you for following. Claim, can we contribute money to you? Uh, I have a tip. You can um, tip via um, Streamlabs. Thank you, by the way. I'll stick around if you're tip. A little tip of the glass to you. But um, yeah, I, I'm glad that this is being taken in by people and um, if there's anything any of you want to know I'm going to shoot off in a minute um, but failing that you can watch these back in the week um, via the video section on Twitch and I also like follow it up on on the uh, Terror of YouTube channel about a week later so you can this one will probably be live next week on a uh, on YouTube um, but next week we'll get into a little bit more on promo and I will follow up with anything i've got up to in the week so next week we should have um the release date locked in should have our artwork all done masters all fully happy with it all of that um big up everyone bad dubs respect maloka shout out everyone jeriff as well oh yeah or go buy something off Bandcamp as well um if you want some music for your money um let me just that's a great idea i keep meaning to put this in my um let me there is the link that will take you to Bandcamp uh, dinner so dinner yeah dinner for me 9 o'clock at night the kids have just gone to sleep um, but yeah if you don't want to donate you want a bit more bang for your buck go to um, 
the Bandcamp page and just cop a little PlayStation release. I mean, this one, yeah, smacker this one. There's a new Gans um, out now, I heard it today. Really, like, he's got back into these kind of vibes. It's called Rufio, Rufio's theme. So, without further ado, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you again. Um, I hope you learned something. And in the week, hit me up on Twitter if you've got any anything that we really we really want to cover. We've got a few more weeks before the release hits. I want to make sure that any questions... Um, we had some great questions um, today. Thank you for them. Roots Records is live, which means we are good to send a nice little raid. Let's have a nice... Let's get our raids going. Yeah, uh, first, before I do that, let's get rid of our... Aesthetic backgrounds for you. See you Thursdays, guys. Yes, Thursday. Um, we'll definitely get a little quiz going. I know a lot of people missed the quiz on Sunday while I was doing my radio show. Um, that radio show is going to air tomorrow on Balamy at 5 o'clock if you missed it. Balamy.com, 5 o'clock. Um, or you can watch it back in my Twitch videos if you want to watch it. Uh, but yeah, we'll get a quiz going on Thursday. I feel like people have missed the quiz. It'd be great to get back into that. 74 subscribers for May, trying to hit that 100. Almost there. Shout out all of my new subscribers. Jenny, shout out Smith for all the donations and the, uh, the sub, the, gener the generous uh, sub donations. Jeriff, no elevator today. Um, I, I've got a, a travel later. But let's get... Um, yeah, ready for the travel later. Let me just... Um, before I get into the travel later, let me, let me get Roots Records lined up. Let's go raid Roots. You guys ready? I'm going to introduce you to Roots' channel. If you've not checked it before, he likes to stream some, some good music and uh, normally some animals doing some cute shit. Let's go uh, get up our boy Roots. There is Roots Records. Is he live? He's not finding your Roots. DJ Spoonie's live. One of my idols. Raid. I'm going to try and raid now. Here we go. Alright gang, it's been a pleasure. We're out, watch this. All right, we're not quite out. Let's raid Roots, everyone. Thank you. Been an absolute pleasure. Steve-O, you just missed it, mate. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday, Steve-O. Get ready for a quiz. Um, we'll have a good one, definitely. All right, gang. Ready to raid Roots Records. Pleasure hanging with you all. Peace. I'll see you next week for another uh, edition of Hacking the Industry. Um, but, yeah, hopefully see a few of you on Thursday for the quiz. Big up.